as we celebrate Independence Day, and I thought we have a different kind of Independence Day as well. We have a spiritual Independence Day that we can celebrate. And so today I'm just going to focus on just a, a segment of the scripture back in the book of Acts. Talk about how, how the early apostles, they, they received the Holy Spirit and then more people received the Holy Spirit and how they continue, right? So the day of Pentecost, that was like an Independence Day for 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 them. It's a day that they independent from the world, right? They they become they they are not bonded by the world, but they are they instead they, the only thing that we want to be dependent on is the Lord, right? So we want to become independent from the world, but we want to depend on the Lord, and um, so. Go to Acts two thirty eight. Yeah. Right. So we all know these scriptures, right? Peter said to them, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit." And and I, I heard from the I heard. From the, the gifts, right? About about as we celebrate, we 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 have the fireworks, right? And and the day of Pentecost, it was it was like a fireworks, right? That people who received the Holy Spirit, it was a huge event. And um, Peter, so there were people who had questions, and Peter got up and said, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ." And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is the recipe, right? That this is the, the the thing that we have to hold on to to for the salvation, right? And I'm going I'm going to the Amplified version. So Peter said to them, repent. Repent means change your old ways of thinking, turn from your sinful ways. Accept and follow Jesus as the Messiah and be baptized in each of you in the name of Jesus Christ because of the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39 For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And in Amplified, for the promise of the Holy Spirit is for you and your children, and for who are far away, including the Gentiles, as many as the Lord our God calls to himself. Verse 14, uh, 40, actually, <laughs> And with many other words, he testified and exhorted, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. And and so this is the point I want to bring out from, from my talk today is save ourselves, right? Be independent, right? Independent from this world. Amplify says, Peter solemnly testified and continued to admonish and urge them with many more words, saying, be saved from this corrupted and unjust generation, right? And and 
And here it says, Peter continued to admonish and urge them with many more words, right? I guess even back then it was not that easy that it's not like you say once or you, you just say something and people follow, right? He had to, like Peter, he had to tell them with many words, right? To try to persuade them, convince them. Verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And here I notice that it says gladly received, right? And as we go out, we talk to people, and not not all of them are were gladly received our words, right? Not all of them want to follow the Lord. And and we encounter this all the time, but you know the Lord doesn't force people to believe Him, right? He doesn't force people to to get baptized. And whoever whoever is called, and they have the they they have their their own decision to make, right? Am I going to follow the Lord, or am I going to do to continue my own way, right? And people who are, who want to receive the word were baptized at that. So for, for this, at that time, people who received the word were baptized. And then on that day, they added about 3,000 souls. And I, recently, I just, you know, we, we had Pastor Kevin come to visit us, and it was great. And over, I think this year, I, I was, uh, how to say, I, I, I took a trip, I visited different assemblies, and then, after I came back, we had a camp, like a camp, right? Yeah, camp. Yeah, camp. And then, and then our wishes. And I feel like, oh wow, I this year I have um, um, how uh, what's the word? I'm a fool. Like just so many, like so much fellowship, and it was great. And I just thought, you know, like every time we have visitors coming from overseas, and then we think, oh, you know. PNG did a great job, or this at that place. They seems like all the revivals happening outside of our place, right? And I just thought, you know, why can we have that kind of revival, right? It's not that we have to always to be motivated by by others. We we can do the same, right? We need to we need to really get ourselves ready. We need to be have that. Have that belief, that trust, right? The Lord put us here. There's a reason, right? And the Lord is, it's, um, how to say, it, it's, it's, it's not that there's no more work to be done. There's a lot more work to be done. And we need to, we need to really think about it. Like, for example, like this, 3,000 souls, are we ready, right? If the Lord is going to add even 50 souls, are we ready, right? Are we ready, are, are we able to to take 50 new people? Have we ever thought about it? Because sometimes we can limit ourselves, right? You think, oh, you go, oh, you talk to people, you already, I already think they're not gonna listen, right? But even before I talk to them. And that's my own um, obstacle, right? I need to think, you know, I, I don't know, maybe they will listen, right? And many times, I was surprised. I talked to some people, I, I thought they probably don't care or they don't listen, but they do, right? So you never know. And so I I need to overcome myself. I need to overcome my own belief, unbelief, right? And, and at the same time, we need to get ourselves ready, right? We, not, not to be too comfortable or too satisfied with what we have, right? I mean, we want to be content, but then we want to we want to challenge ourselves to grow, right? To grow in the Lord. Okay, so in, in Amplified, so then those who accepted his message were baptized, and on that day about 3,000 souls were added to the body of believers. Okay, 242. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. 
And I want to emphasize on continue, right? And steadfastly. I, we often talk about, like pay attention to all, how many baptism we someplace have, right? How many people receive the Holy Spirit? And that, that's great. But then it's more important that people continue, right? Continue to follow the Lord. And getting baptized and receiving the Holy Spirit, that, that was just the beginning, right? That was like the fireworks, right? It's great. But then after that, you have to continue, right? You, you don't just get baptized, receive the Spirit, and then not walking in the Lord. And so they continue steadfastly in the Apostles' Doctrine and fellowship, and we know it's important to, to have fellowship with one another, right? And in breaking of bread, right? Share, have meals together. We do that all the time. Our potluck tomorrow, and we have many dinners. Yeah. And this year, I, I wanted to have like lunches with people, but so far, so far, I, only, I think I went to lunch with maybe only a handful of people, uh, but but it was more than nothing last year, or not nothing, but like more than before, right? And and because I want to spend time one on one or two two <laughs> two or three, and with with people in the Lord, right? And because like right now I I, I look. I look at you and say, oh, wow, these are all my favorite people, right? Except, no, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I, I want to know, get to know you better because sometimes we have a, a, a big fellowship functions and then, but we don't really have time to talk, to talk more um, deeply, right? To understand each other more. So sometimes that that's a. I think if we can have more, even like more one-on-one -on -one or or small group time, that would be great. Yeah. And then in prayers, the prayer is so important, right? We need to pray for each other. We need to pray with each other, right? So same thing. Amplified, they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to fellowship, to eating meals together and to prayers. Okay, 43, and fear came upon every soul if any wonders and signs were done by the apostles. I wasn't sure about the fear, what, what kind of fear, and then I look at the Amplified, it says a sense of awe was felt by everyone. And many wonders and signs, attesting miracles were taking place through the apostles. Um, so if we, you know, if we can, if if we if we can do just like them, like have a unity as a as a group, right? And we have a lot of fellowship with each other. We are focused on the same thing and. And we pray for each other. And this is something really powerful, right? This is something that that the Lord will bless. And things will happen. And people from outside, that's when they see us, they, they can clearly see something different. That's totally different from, from the society, right? From the world. And, and that's power, right? That's power that people can say, like, wow, that's a sense of all, right? And even among ourselves, we see we can see the Lord works. The Lord work among all of us, right? Forty four. And all that believe were together and had all things common. And all those who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together and had all things in common, considering their possessions to belong to the group as a whole. Forty-five, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. 
and improvises as they began selling their property and possessions and were start sharing the proceeds with all the other believers as anyone had need. And I, I think in addition to, to the material things that we can share, I think we, we're, doing, we're doing a fairly good job. We, we help each other in this fellowship, right? And people who have need, that they, they are helped. And, and when we come together, we, people always are very helpful. They help each other. And the, the best thing that you can share is not only the material things, but it's your love, right? Your time. Right, your your prayer, your your thoughts, right, for one another, your attention, right? When you when you when you pay attention not just to yourself but to others, right? Look around, right? Pay attention to other people. And and if everybody is doing the same, then we are all taken care of, right? And nobody will be left out, right? Uh, 46, and they continue daily with one accord, not one Camry or one Ford, <laughs> in a temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And day after day, they met in temple area, continuing with one line and breaking bread in various private homes, they were eating their meal together with joy and generous hearts. And so the, the word, the previous one says singleness of heart, here say generous heart, and I, I see some other translations say sincere heart, or simplicity of the heart. heart. And, and I, I thought this is kind of like, a, like our camp, right? It's like a for, for them, it's probably a, a forever camp. Like they're all living in this big camp, right? Like, like when, we, when, we go to, when we go to our camp, we all, we do a lot of things together, right? And, and this must feel kind of like our camps, right? Like people share together, share, share meal together, they spend time together, and they have fellowship, a lot of fellowship with each other. I thought that it was just it was just great, and I I'm I'm glad that now we have we have like how I many four four camps in North America? We have Georgia, you have two personal camps, and then we have Youngie camp, Youngie's camp. So that's like four camps, right? And so there are a lot of opportunities for people to get involved and to, to go to camps. And each each camp for me is like a like a like a boost, right? And sometimes you you go on with your daily life, and then you kind of get a little bit lower the like energy, and then the camp kind of kind of a, a, a booster, right? Like a rocket booster that help you to go higher there. So. Okay, two forty seven. Praising God and having favor with all people, and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praising God continually and having favor with all the people. And I read one translation say, uh, demonstrating de demonstrating God's goodness with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved. And I think if, if we the, the secret of having more, having, the, the, I, I guess the, the secret of increasing is to, to do what the Lord says, right? And if we are all in one accord, if we all have one mind, one purpose, and pray for each other, have a fellowship with each other, and that's when the Lord says, okay, you are ready, right? You are ready to take more. I'm going to bless you with more, right? I'm going to add it to you. Because if we are not ready, 
all good would that be when more people come, they don't get fed, right? They don't get, they don't get the fellowship or, or prayer if we are not in one accord, if we are not having the unity and if we are not strong ourselves. It's not going to help having more people coming, right? And so, so when I when I read these scriptures, I remind myself, you know, I need to do, I need to make, I need to do better in all these areas, right? I need to, I need to pray more. I need to have, I need to focus on each other more. I need to, to, to um, understand that why I'm here for, right? I'm here to do His work, and. The only way, the only way I can do his work is to, to know the word better myself, to pray, right, to ask for his help, because it's not that I do the work, but it's the Lord that does the work, right, and, and so if we focus, right, if we help each other, if we focus on him, and then he will bless our work, he will bless um, things that we, we do in this earth, and and that's that's our desire, right? To have more people to come to the Lord, because we we are in this life that we are here because it it's, it has been great for us. We know how we were before before we were independent from the world. The life was not the life that we wanted, right? It was we were in bondage of this world, but now we are independent from the world, we are relying on the Lord, and we want more people to know that this is a better way, just like P said, like when he heard that there is a better way, and it's actually an easier way, because the Lord said his yoke is easy, right, and it's easier, but it's just so hard for some people to, to understand. I guess it's kind of like you can't really tell people how it feels like to ride a bicycle if they don't know how to, if they have never tried it, right? They have to get on and try themselves to really understand how it's like to be able to balance and ride a bicycle going forward. And so that's why we have to go out and then encourage people to, to come to pray. And when they receive the Holy Spirit, that's when that's how they can understand. Because before that, we can try to persuade them, but it's not going to work that well, right? It's it's just like you try to tell people, it's got to feel like this when you ride a bicycle, but it's, they never really going to get it until they actually try it and then it will be balanced and not fall down. Yeah. Okay, so just some scriptures to to encourage myself, and then I hope you get encouraged as well. So anyway, happy Fourth Independence Day. Amen. Prayer time. Please come forward, and we will.